Hi, it's JJ Levinsky with Blue Wave General Contracting, coming to you live from our corporate office, if that's if that could be any more of a uh, uh, kind of a lead in. I, I, I kind of say it tongue in cheek um, because it was fun to think of us having a headquarters when we're just seven people. So having said that, uh, this is our first video that we're doing that's outside of the podcast scenarios. Um, my colleague Suzanne Sanders and I thought it would be a smart idea to start sharing our thoughts um, with our growing public, both trade partners, clients, who's ever willing to listen, just so that we can spawn some ideas and hopefully get better feedback. And maybe if we're going in the right direction, the wrong direction, and pay it forward somehow in the um, in the industry as it as it translates to all the people that I just mentioned. Um, two incident. Well, the, the first topic I want to touch on was sparked by two different incidents. The, in the last few weeks where it related to subcontractors or our trade partners, if you will, and the law of supply and demand in the marketplace right now. Um, I'll give both examples and then I wanna use that as a segue into where I think this is going and, and there's two, two paths that I wanna talk about and hopefully get some feedback from anyone that's willing to watch and listen on that. And that is this. On one of the jobs we had, one of the subcontractors had two individuals not show up for work and uh, a rather large crew. However, it impacted their productivity and their mindset and the rest of their week at a much more profound, um, not rate, but an experience that I had expected. I happened to witness it and you know pulled him aside and said, hey, well, what's the deal? And he goes, listen, I, I had two guys not show up today and look at what it did to our crew. I mean, it, it basically paralyzed us. A few days later, same thing happened again in a different capacity where it was one individual, um, but didn't show up with the proper you know, supplies, tools, what have you, and more importantly, didn't show up with the right attitude. Also a paralyzing effect for him because he relied and needed that guy to perform to a, at 100% that day or everything was off. So again, we're into the critical path, if you will. So why is, why is, is this anything new? No, I mean, we've been dealing with it forever in our industry, but in the state of the economy right now with this hyper inflammatory reaction to it all, um, it's just, it's becoming almost stifling to everyone and everyone's burnt out. Everyone's at a hundred percent capacity in their, their thought process. It's not that they're not trying to take care of the client, meaning us, or not that we're trying to not take care of our clients, you know, the end user. It's just literally supply and demand. So what made me think about it is, back to these two paths, one is where's our workforce? How have we gotten to this point? What can we do going forward? And the other one is where's the empathy and the advocacy to get us out of this because it's a fight that we can't do alone. So let me start down the path of the workforce, our employees, our partners, all that kind of stuff. I was fortunate enough to be on a podcast with uh, Sims Business Systems. Oh, a couple weeks ago, this topic came up. And I'm not saying I'm, I took a contrarian viewpoint, but instead of trying to force what I call the tech school mentality down the youth's throat per se, in other words, we're not gonna bring back um, shop class and all those kind of things. As much as I'd love to, because it was such a pivotal part of my existence and many other generations, um, it's our job to, instead of trying to will that back into the marketplace, give our kids a chance to uh, make this sexy, make it fun, make tech uh, enablement part of this whole solution. And the story I gave is I, my son is a senior in high school, how could I get him into the construction, engineering trades, anything in that capacity? And that it, it has to be game driven, virtual driven, AI driven, something to that effect. That is there. So how we, um, incentivize that for our youth. That's incumbent on us as the leaders of the industry now to get that moving forward. Instead, I see a lot of my peers, um, I love them to death, but I see them kind of uh, beating a dead horse, so to speak, of advocating for all these old trade school crafts, if you will. Yes, we need that at a core, but you have to marry it to what's real and tangible for the kids of, t of today and going into the future. So when I see robots erecting masonry, where's the, where's the kid that's gonna program that? or figure out how to integrate the supply chain into that. And then how does that get erected? How does it get dismantled? How does the throughput look? Um, those challenges I think are, are there for the taking if we can again, make it attractive, 
and incentivize people to, to find solutions in, in that capacity. So I'm excited about that um, because I, I, I just think it's the future and I just don't want to keep uh, going down that same path. You know, the definition of an insanity, insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. And unfortunately, our industry is kind of at that at that juncture right now because we're all so buried with our current workflow that we're not all of us, but I think again, at, in totality, the industry is just kind of stymied and stifled by our, our, our pure massive workflow right now that maybe our, our sites on innovation are sitting at the back burner because balance sheets and P&Ls are flush again. So personal bias, but uh, I'd like to see us make a more concerted effort there. Then secondly, back to the advocacy of supporting your own internal ecosystem. And uh, again, a strong bias and a strong passion towards take a trade contractor, a trade partner of yours that is the best trade partner that you have, but maybe you have more business savvy and acumen where you can help them get over the crux of their growth. So I use the story from before of maybe that problem was not the employee, it was the leadership and management realizing that they cut they cut it too close. They weren't honest with my project manager on the schedule. So we took their information, put it into our critical path or you know a pull schedule as far as uh, you know putting the lean back into it. And by having that little bit of fallacy in that, it skewed everything. So it wasn't intent, it was the it was the actual deliverable that failed. So was that a lack of training or was that someone just trying to be too many things to too many people? I don't know, but you can see is had there been a little bit more transparency and a little bit more honesty in the planning and maybe that was a result of them not having the wherewithal and the training to understand how that impacts not only our project, but ultimately his own business. So if he failed us, then everything else gets pulled out of kilter it's the, uh, what I call the spider web effect. If everyone's ever heard that analogy before you pull on it and the whole thing moves and then it distorts every, everything else. So uh, just that, that team approach um, that I see not missing, but again, everyone's so busy that, that I don't always see the, the, the collaboration that is so important in, in making sure that we're all on the same page and delivering what we've promised to the owners or the end user. A great example that I can give is I was fortunate to be part of a design build meeting the other day where we had people very early on in the process from supply chain and trade partners. And after the meeting, um, two of the ind individuals said, why can't every meeting be like that in our industry? Where they had valid input. Um, and it's just, again, it's paradigm shifts. It's breaking down those ceilings that we don't want to deal with because we're too busy. So if we take those two applications as far as attracting the youth and the next generations of how we're going to implement construction techniques into our industry and also a stronger advocacy and collaboration with all of the thought partners in your ecosystem for success and particularly as it applies to construction, I think that's a monumental um, not monumental, I think it's a, a nice start and organic change to how we can collaborate and move forward on the communication of those, those things. The other one though is saying no. Um, I, I think in times like this where things are good, we want to continue to say yes and maybe that isn't the best solution. And yes or no doesn't have to be no. No can be, can you pay it forward to someone else that's a more befitting match in that time and place right now? And you may not be able to monetize that, but if it's a true value add, aren't you going to get something in return? Maybe if it makes you feel good, maybe if it's a quid pro quo um, down the line, who knows? But I, I would say that as I see more success out there, I see more of that than where everyone just says yes to wherever they can and then they look in the rearview mirror and go, oh great, we don't have the manpower, we don't have the resources, we don't have the capital, we don't have this, but yet no one wants to go back to the, the, the doom and gloom days of the recession, so everyone's so eager to say, yes, 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 build the pipeline. Well, if you build the pipeline too big, I don't know if you can perform to it as well. So again, inner monologue um, as far as the argument of whether that's good or bad to, to each his or her own and every organization is, is 
unique and different in that aspect. But I think we should start asking those questions more and more. And then as that translates to our business development and how we're dealing with the owners, tell them the truth. Everything I just talked about should be delivered in a transparent manner to our, our customers that we're working with right now. And it's not always the most popular thing, but I think in the end, you'll appreciate it, you'll be more profitable and you won't burn out your people. Um, and that brings up the, the final thing is that the burnout rate um, is at an all time high. And you know, people are stealing from each other and is it really greener on the other side? I look at most of it not to benefits or salary or anything like that, it's, it's burnout within the organizations. And you know, the reason that people aren't showing up or the reason that things are failing in the employer-employee relationship is primarily from just burnout. Um, and to be honest, I and our team are probably uh, uh, guilty as charged as well. So it's a little bit of a shout out to myself and our organization that in looking in the mirror saying we need to do a better job of that as well. So anyway, the, the intent is to share these ideas and hopefully uh, with our following and our like-minded friends and colleagues out there, hopefully this will create kind of a dialogue. Love to have you give us feedback either on whatever platform you're seeing this in, whether it's YouTube, TV, LinkedIn, or whatever. Um, let's start the chat, get it going. I'm sure it'll spawn new ideas, maybe even some creative arguments. But if, if we can find some meaningful solutions and, and things that'll lead to a better result for all of us and our clients, I'm all for it. And we hope to see you next time on uh, our little Blue Wave chat. Thank you for listening.